This interview has been made of Mrs. W.M. Anderson, who came to Ardmore in 1901. Mrs. Anderson, uh, in your opinion, what is the most important development of the early day businesses of Ardmore? When you say the Ardmore. <laughs> All right. Uh, when did you first come to live at Ardmore? In 1901. <clears throat> well, what were the first schools in that timeline? We didn't have much school. So we called a Niblick school. I don't know about the schools when we got first born. I understand that you were here at the time of the big explosion they had here in Ardmore. Could you tell me about that? Nothing more than this part of town was considered way out of town, and our yard was mm -hmm. full of people coming from the explosion, and we stopped in it. Uh, when did the first churches of Ardmore start to develop? And what were the some of the churches that were the first pioneers of religion here? When we came here, there was a Presbyterian and a Cumberland Presbyterian, Baptist and a Methodist church. First Christian. Mrs. Anderson, I understand that you have kept a diary of your early day life and your pastime. Could you tell me something about that? I kept a diary since 1933. 1933. Uh, how does the system of schools compare with the schools today in the last 50 years? There's no comparison. <laughs> I understand your husband is a veterinarian here. He's been a veterinarian here in Ardmore for many years. Could you tell us something about uh, the system he had giving each person a pair of mules with a plot of ground? Dr. Anson gave it. When we came here in 1901, they were bringing the Mississippi Choctaw Indians from Mississippi to Oklahoma to our Indian territory. And Dr. Anderson was asked to give each, uh, to pair these mules off and give them to the Indians. And they were also given 40 acres of land. When you first moved here, what forms of transportation did you have? Horse and buggy. And I had my own horse, Tony, and my greatest delight was taking my children out in the country and letting Kate walk across bridges. Since you didn't have any very many movies, what forms of entertainment did you have? We just had games in our homes, like dominoes or cards, and uh, go to a movie. That one's week. Veterinarian office here in the house. Did you learn anything from his office being here? I think I learned something about the dog and the horse. I learned when a dog was in pain, the, the bark he'd make or the whine he'd make. Or uh, if a darky came up to the office he could tell I could tell he was there by the way the dog barked. <clears throat> how did the Indians act back in your time around town and how were they treated? Well they'd come to town in the morning, those that wanted to shop and then just sit around down on Main Street and finally get what they want and go home. Those Indians that come about the mules, come to see Dr. Anson about the mules, they sat on the fence like birds all day long. <laughs> had their own farm of entertainment? They had a picnic three days after I came to the Indian Territory, and they prepared the, the food. And we really enjoyed eating their cooking. This interview is being made by LaVos Buckles, a senior in Ardmore High School, <coughs> 56.